and welcome to RIT Sports Zone. I'm John DeTulio. And I'm Emily Clark. In the midst of a season long six game winless streak, the RIT men's hockey team returned to Ritter Arena with hopes of getting their season back on track and their first win on home ice this year. The Tigers facing Sacred Heart. The Pioneers entered the weekend series without a win in 14 games this season. Picking up in the second period, Alexander Kukali untouched. Skates to the net, Mike Kolovecchia puts home the loose puck for his second of the night. It was three zip Tigers. Later in the period, the Tigers crash the net. This time, Kukali gets credit for the goal. His first as a Tiger, 4-1 RIT. But Sacred Heart would rally. Third period, Mike Kolovecchia's pass is taken away by Ben Lake, and he goes in for the unassisted shorthanded goal to bring the Pioneers within one. Shorthanded. Wow, what a good, that was a poor pass by Kolovecchia. RIT would answer right back on the power play. Brad McGowan records his second goal on the season. RIT hangs on to win 5-3. And the Tigers will have no more of this. 5-3. It's going to rest on the shoulders of number 30, Josh Watson. Yeah. Josh Watson in net for RIT in game two of the Tigers series with Sacred Heart. Second period action, Chris Saracino, the blast. It goes off the pipe, but Mike Kolovecki is there to put home the rebound. It was 3-1 RIT. Then in the third, Saracino tries to wrap around. It doesn't go, but Adam Hartley is there for his fourth goal of the year. RIT completes the weekend sweep of Sacred Heart, winning 5-2. Here's Adam Hartley. Boy, that was sweet. The Tigers accumulated five big points before the holiday break, but still find themselves ninth in the AHA standings and 10 points behind first place Niagara. It's been a struggle for the first three months, but the Tigers aren't ready to push the panic button just yet. A disappointing loss for the Tigers tonight. Yeah, because of some, some sloppy defensive play early on. How weird is it to be looking up in the league standings versus normally being the one who's on top? It's definitely a different experience for us. Uh, we've been on the top for since I've been here, and um, looking down, I'm sure, or looking up, I should say, I'm sure every team loves the fact that we're at the bottom of the standings, but we played about every team in the league now. We know what they have to offer. We, we know we can compete and beat every single one of them. Trying to keep our team on course is going to be the best uh, plan of action right now. Uh, if we panic, you know, things just going to uh, snowball out of control. So it's not going to do anything to panic. And I don't think uh, we're too far off of where we were. It's, it's a very competitive league and a very competitive game. And, you know, it's one or two goals each game. And, and, that, and then you're on the other side of the, in the win column. So it, no panic in the dressing room at all. Can you talk a little bit about the difficulty of the AHA? I think anyone can beat anyone now in our league, and, and I think when we first entered the league, uh, we could have a subpar game and still win the game, and uh, that's not the case now. I think uh, there's going to be a lot of so-called upsets, but I think it's too close to really say that. And, and our standings last year uh, showed us uh, you know, how tight our league was, so uh, I, I think it's going to be another tight finish again this year. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about goaltending. Obviously a big hole left by Shane, and you've been doing a rotation of both Watson and Ruby over the past games. Is that what you think you're going to do for the rest of the season? No, we're, we're going to take it uh, game by game and series by series and take a look at where we're at. The rotation is going to be really kind of dictated on play and also a little bit on we don't want to leave anyone behind either. Uh, uh, whether we have a number one or not, uh, if we have a number one goalie, then I, you know, it doesn't mean that number one's going to play every game. Someone else is going to also get in there. Are you comfortable with the rotation of you and Jordan, or are you both still kind of waiting for Coach to pick somebody to be the permanent goalie? We're both comfortable um, going every other game, as long as Coach wants that. Um, we obviously both want to play, so uh, we're both striving to be the starting goalie. But um, as far as uh, Coach wants us to keep rotating, we're fine with that. Where do you think you need to improve? Right now it's just kind of controlling the game. Um, we need to have a lot of stoppage in play and stuff like that, especially when we get a lot of pressure on. So kind of controlling the puck and making sure to keep it out of danger zones. How do you feel like as a captain you're really motivating the guys and keeping everybody focused? Uh, I think it's just day in, day out type hard work is the only way that you're going you're gonna to keep the guys straight because if they see you slacking off just because you're losing games or something, they're going to fall right in line. So um, myself, Adam Hartley, and Matt Garbowski, if we just stay the course and, and bring our work ethic every day, I think like we are doing, I think it's, it's going to work out for us. Score! 
comes Chris Saracino. I know you've already said that everybody is pretty optimistic. Is there any part of you that feels like this hole is too big to dig out of? Not at all. Uh, you, you definitely can't ever think that. So uh, if we were thinking that, we'd be in some trouble. But we're, I don't think we're in any trouble. I don't think there's any hole that we're too, that's going to be too big for us to climb out of. Um, the good thing about our league is every team makes the playoffs. So even if we don't finish in the top four, we're still going to be fine. And we, have, we always will have that opportunity to, to make it to our goal, which is the AHA championship. No, it hasn't been a good start, and uh, but uh, that's not how it has to finish. So it, it, it really, for us, we've just got to keep moving forward. And uh, if we're going to just dwell on the past, then we're not going to get out of the hole. But uh, I think if we keep looking forward, I think we can make progress, and uh, a lot of good things can happen this year. The Tigers get back to conference play in January, and we've got you covered. Our next broadcast of men's hockey comes up January 11th and 12th when the Tigers host Bentley. Both games will air on Time Warner Cable. For a complete TV schedule, visit RITSZ.com. Welcome back to Sports Zone. The idea originated in 1999, and since then, it's been growing in popularity around the world. As Kristen Clock reports, the RIT men's hockey team joined the cause in the hopes of helping change the face of men's health. November? More like Movember. Can you tell me what Movember is? Uh, Movember is for uh, prostate cancer. Um, it's basically, we raise money for research for it. So uh, we all grow mustaches um, in support of that. It's for a great cause. I mean, prostate cancer is um, one of the main cancers uh, for men and uh, it's something that we can uh, raise awareness for. It's a good cause. It's, it's fun to get all the boys and see their mustaches. And no, it is for prostate cancer, but in a way it's to see who has the best mustache. So you usually have a pretty strict no facial hair policy. Why do you make an exception for Movember? Well, it's for a good cause. The, the guys are raising money for uh, prostate cancer. Uh, the coaches deviate from the Movember as far as we grow a little bit more facial hair. It goes a little longer anyways uh, on our chin, but uh, the guys have a lot of fun with the mustaches. and. Uh, it's a kind of almost a team bonding thing as well. For some, growing facial hair is easy. Who do you think has one of the better mustaches on the team? I think the, uh, our other goalie, uh, Jordan Ruby, has a really good one. A few people have said that you have one of the better mustaches on the team. What's your reply to that? I don't want to brag, but if they're going to tell the truth, it's, I see how it, how it is. Um, no, as a, as a sports guy, you got to stick, stick to your strengths. And I know when it comes to handlebar mustache, that's my strength, so I support it well. For others, growing facial hair is a challenge. Who do you think has one of the worst mustaches on the team? It's got to be those blondies. Those are tough because you can't see it. And then the cheaters use just for men, so those are the cheaters. We don't count those. Maybe, I heard Wadi talk about kooks. Millsies is pretty faint, but it's there. But it's tough. I think uh, Josh Mitchell, Mitchell is probably the worst. So you were elected as someone who has one of the worst mustaches on the team. What do you have to say to that? I accept it. Um, never really been a guy that grows facial hair, but uh, it's for a good cause, so I'll try to keep it for a while and see where it goes. What advice do you give to the players who have trouble growing a mustache? <laughs> There's not much advice for that. That's either you got it or you don't have it. <laughs> uh, just if you can grow one, you can also uh, you can get just for men if your hair is a little lighter. So that would that would help it out a little bit. Have you personally tried that trick? No, of course not. While Movember included plenty of laughs for the Tigers, it also raised money through social media and t-shirt sales to benefit the Prostate Cancer Foundation, while shedding light on one of the most common cancers in men. It's probably something that I'd like to maybe get a little bit more organized and more structure to it and uh, maybe put a little bit more effort into it uh, because I think it's a good uh, cause and uh, I don't know if everyone really knows what we do it for, but uh, I think they just think we're all growing mustaches. But uh, I, I think it's something that the, the rest of the athletic department's getting behind as well. So I think it's a, a good idea. So you hope that Movember grows in the future? Uh, yes, very well. You're getting very creative here. <laughs> she likes this. Uh, yeah, I, I do. And uh, like I said, I'd like to, to promote this a little bit stronger. And, uh, you know, the Make the Rink Pink is also a great cause, and, and everyone knows what pink stands for now, but uh, the mustaches, I think we can still get out there to the general public and uh, let them know what we're doing and, and uh, support it and try and raise more money than what we're doing.
The RIT men's hockey team, athletic department, and pre-med student association raised over $4,500 for Movember Foundation, which also funds the Prostate Cancer and Live Strong Foundations. Managing the day-to-day -day operations of a Division I hockey team is one of the most demanding jobs you can have within an athletic department. This year alone, Jeff Siegel will oversee countless practices, 34 regular season games, and will travel over 4,000 miles on the road with the men's team. As Kristen Clock discovered, Siegel is the glue that holds the entire operation together. Equipment manager Jeff Siegel's duties are never ending. Jeff works tirelessly to make sure game day runs smooth. Although Siegel studied sports and recreation management at New England College, he's learned much of his job while on the go in his seven years at RIT. On both sides? It's like stretched out. No, is it on this one too? No. Just okay, so what I'll do. When I first started, I really wouldn't say I knew how to fix much as far as hockey equipment, but I kind of just picked stuff up along the way and talked to other people. And there's some great equipment managers around our league that uh, you can bounce some things off of. I started managing hockey in high school because my two best friends were on the team, and the only way to hang out with them was to be a part of it. And I knew I wanted to study sport and recreation management, so I thought it would look good on a resume to start managing hockey. And then when I went to college, I decided that I needed to be involved somehow then, so I emailed the coach there. And they had had three guys already that were managers, so I was kind of fourth on the totem pole. But I guess I quickly worked my way up. It was a brand new coach, and um, there was two seniors and a junior. And the first time that some of those guys didn't show up, he just said, okay, you're next. And I got to travel with them, and then the rest was history, four years there. And then he's the one who really helped get me the job here. Managing the teams has helped Jeff keep in touch with his love of sports. His favorite part of the job is the game. It's going to be a good one. Today. I love being around the team. Like we got a great group of guys, and uh, it's just fun to be a part of a team. Like I was never very athletic or anything, but um, this is my way to keep up in sports. I give everyone a piece of gum. So 50 minutes till game time, the whole team's chewing, even if they just put it in their mouth and spit it out, is chewing the same flavor, same piece of gum in unison. And so it's like, okay, together we're gonna go out and do this. A bad new one here, boys, let's go. Let's go, let's go, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your R.I.T. Tigers. Obviously game days are exciting. There's nothing like coming into a packed Ritter and listening to the fans, watching the guys work hard and score goals and go on to victory. Let's go, Coy! Nice cross ice speed, the backhander, Legato! Robbing Dakota, but he puts it back in! And the Tigers go up one to nothing. Oh, We've got number two here, boys! His job isn't all fun and games. Jeff pretty much does everything from grabbing the game day meal to fixing equipment and sharpening skates. So right now I'm just kind of setting the wheel so that it cuts at the right depth for how he likes his skates. We've got about six different depths of uh, what guys like on this team. I, I feel, and maybe people will laugh at me for saying this, but I feel like I can control it. Like I've got to make sure the skates are good or else the guy's not gonna be able to skate well. At the end of a 15-hour shift, Jeff goes home and rests up before starting all over again the next day. So we're going to turn the laundry on. The, the jerseys are going right now, and we've got to get the socks going, um, the underclothes and the towels that the guys are going to use right now and that they wore underneath their equipment needs to be washed. We've got to do Sacred Hearts laundry, towels and clothes, and then uh, sharpen skates, clean up the referee's room, and turn it all around for tomorrow. Yeah. 
Welcome back to Sports Zone. After five straight road losses and 35 days without a home game, the RIT women's hockey team gladly returned to Ritter Arena for a pair of conference games against Lindenwood. The Tigers took game one, five to one in game two. The Lions got on the board first. Allison Wickenheiser scores to give Lindenwood a one nothing lead. It stayed that way until the third. Tigers on the power play. Tanisha Hiller gets the equalizer, her fifth goal in the year. Tigers and Lions skated to a one-all tie. Well, prior to moving to Division I, RIT went unbeaten in 57 of its final 60 games at the Division III level, which included earning the program's first national title last spring. So far, Division I hasn't been as kind as RIT has lost nine of its first 19 games. SC's Emily Martin recently caught up with the Tigers as they received praise for their past accomplishments. Here at Locust Hill Country Club, the now Division I women's hockey team is celebrating their 2012 Division III National Championship season. The team will be receiving their rings in a short ceremony hosted by RIT's Dr. Mary Beth Cooper. What is it like to finally get the rings after waiting for so long? Uh, I think it's almost like another surreal moment. I think it took a few months for us to hit us that we actually won a national championship, but now we're replaying the special moments all over again, getting the rings. Is, you know, we actually have something to symbolize our memories and our accomplishments. So I think it's definitely a, a day everyone's going to never forget. It's been amazing, especially because we were supposed to get it early September kind of thing. So it's kind of been a waiting process, but we knew that the wait was definitely worth it, so it's been great. So what was your initial reaction when you opened the box? I think I might have started tearing up just out of pure excitement, but it was just beautiful and bigger than I thought it was going to be, but it's, it's nice. It was worth the wait, well worth the wait. I think along with everyone else, I was kind of just in total shock. We knew that they were going to be pretty big. Like they said, we didn't really want like the small rings, but this is just amazing. It's pretty much more than we could have asked for. Do you think receiving the rings today has helped with team morale? Yeah, definitely, and you know, it almost singles out the new freshmen this year, but I think it just makes them realize how uh, important and how much team chemistry we had this year, and, and now we're all a part of the team, so we can all share this moment together, and hopefully they have a moment like this in the future. I think it'll help, you know, it, it is last season, and there's to a point we have to put this all behind us, so I think it'll be kind of, you know, you have the ring ceremony, and once 12 o'clock comes for the game, it's got your game face on, but I think it's, it's a nice smile that we can all cherish for the day. Do you think it brings up some favorite memories from last season? Yeah, especially with the video that recaps some of the big moments we had and like the celebration we had when we won the national championship. So I think it brings everyone back to that moment, but it's hard because now we're mid-season of our next season. We have a game to focus on this afternoon, so a, a quick recap, but definitely very special. Even with the video and the captain's speeches and everything, it really puts it all into perspective and lets you think about it and look back on it. And you know that you know a couple of years down the road, you still have this memory and you're never going to forget it. What do you think is the big difference between being Division Three last season and being Division One this season? Um, I just think every game is a, a tough game. Not that every game last year wasn't, but every game is a lot more physically and mentally demanding. So overall, I think we've been accepting the challenge and taking the step forward well. Do you think the win last night helped with the ceremony today? Absolutely. I think we, we definitely needed that win, for sure. We've been on a kind of five-game down streak for a bit, so I think the win kind of helped, and everyone's been in a really good mood. So. Um, I think that's been one of the biggest um, steps for our team to take is uh, adjusting to not always being the winning team. But I think it's just helping to build our team. Losing these games is almost like stepping stones to getting back to where we were, adjusting to new teams. So I think with yesterday's win, it will be a, a good way to go into break. The Lady Tigers also get back on the ice in January. And our next live broadcast of women's hockey comes up January 12th when the Tigers host Colgate. The game will air on Time Warner Cable Channel 98. For a complete TV schedule, visit RITSC.com. While staying connected to SportsZone is now easier than ever thanks to the all-new RIT SportsZone app. Catch up on the games and episodes you've missed and discover so much more. It is a must for all Tiger fanatics, so download the RIT Sports Zone app for your iPhone or iPad today. Well, that does it for this episode of RIT Sports Zone. Until next time, thanks for joining us in the zone. <laughs>